I really think that for most video editors, MacBook Pro M1 Max chip is way, way too overkill. I spent hours thinking about which option to pick, 14 inch, 16 inch, four GPU options, three options of unified memory, five options of storage, man, it was hard. And I gotta be honest with you, I don't wanna spend extra cash for a laptop, I want an option that is best for my workflow. And I wanna clarify this, I'm here not to convince you that M1 Max is a complete waste of money, but I wanna give you a better understanding what you're paying for and what is actually enough for video editing. So today we have the MacBook Pro 13 inch M1 model, 16 inch M1 Pro model with 10 core core CPU, 16 core GPU, 16 gigs of unified memory, and one terabyte of storage. And we also have the fully loaded latest Asus ZenBook Pro Duo UX582 with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070. We're gonna run some real-life tests in DaVinci Resolve in Premiere Pro, and we're also gonna dive deep a bit more into graphics in After Effects and Unreal Engine. Because video editing is not the only thing we're doing, right? So my goal with this video is to help you save money picking the best option for you. Hey, what's up? My name is Arthur Weiner and let's put the number one thing out of the way. 14 inch or 16 inch. Guys, this screen is beautiful. Having liquid retina XDR with ProMotion at the same time is fantastic. It's one of the best experiences I've had on a laptop just using it, navigating the interface. It's so freaking smooth. After using it for a while, previous MacBook model and also the ZenBook feels laggy and not as satisfying as the new MacBook. You are paying 200 bucks more for the same 16 inch version and it is completely worth it in my opinion. Even if you're using external monitor, having a bigger size of this beautiful screen is worth it and is not waste of money as for me. I was a bit worried that it would not fit into my backpack that is good for 15 inch laptops, but surprisingly it fits perfectly fine. I would say only if you travel a lot, 14 inch would be a better option because you can get the same performance in a smaller device and maybe you already have a great external monitor and you're not really interested in using the MacBook screen, then go with the 14 inch model. But in other cases, I suggest you to go with a 16 inch. Once that is clear, let's pick the hardest, CPU and GPU. But before we do, hit the like button for the cutest background you've ever seen. Now, if you go with a 16 inch model, you will have only the 10 core CPU option, so it's not that hard to pick. But with the 14 inch model, you have the eight core CPU option. Hmm. Frankly speaking, if your budget is very limited, this option is still amazing. And to prove that, let me give you a quick reminder. In one of my previous videos, I compared the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro to the ZenBook Pro Duo and M1 got dangerously close in terms of rendering speed and overall performance. Yeah, the Premiere Pro performance is bad, but we'll get to this. And M1 is twice as cheaper than the ZenBook. M1 has eight core CPU and eight core GPU, but with the 14 inch, we have the 14 core GPU. So you will get even better performance, plus the new amazing display, plus new speakers, plus new built-in microphone, plus new ports, plus a better camera. Basically everything that M1 Max user has, but not as powerful as it could be, of course, but it might be powerful enough for you. It's a great option for those of you who are not working with heavy codecs, heavy graphics, you will be happy with this machine. If you're using entry-level cameras that shoot 8-bit, 1080 or 4K, guys, you will be happy with this machine. Even if sometimes you film 10-bit 4K ProRes with basic color grading, not so many effects, it will also work great. But for those of you who are working with heavy video files and graphics or planning to, let's move to the other options. And let's jump through this option because upgrading just the CPU will not make a noticeable difference and it's just 100 bucks more to get 16 core GPU. Now, this is the option that I wanna have your attention on, both 14 inch and 16 inch. I think that this model is a golden mean for most video editors and let me show you why. This model is in front of you right now and we're gonna throw some heavy footage and graphics at this machine and see how fast it starts to slow down and we're gonna compare it to the 13 inch M1 and the ZenBook. Let's launch DaVinci Resolve Studio and for the first test I have this YouTube episode that is 11 minutes long. I shot it using the Sony FX3 camera and it's 1080p 10-bit 422 footage on a 1080p timeline with some b-roll and color grading applied. As you may have guessed, all three machines play back this footage smoothly, no lags, 
at all. When I scroll the timeline, when I add Fusion titles on top, I am happy with the performance on all three machines when I added a basic YouTube episode. Now, rendering speed. ZenBook finished in 6 minutes and 3 seconds, followed by M1 5 minutes and 38 seconds, and M1 Pro finished in crazy 2 minutes and 29 seconds. I remind you that we have an 11 minute video. And in case you're wondering, the same video upscaled to 4K on M1 Pro finished in 6 minutes and 57 seconds. By the way, for all of you who's using Final Cut, keep in mind that it's gonna be a bit faster than Resolve. For the next test, we have a commercial video that is 2 minutes and 26 seconds, the same Sony camera, but this time 4K 10-bit 422 footage on a 4K timeline color grading, effects, and speed ramps applied. The workflow on M1 Pro is amazing, silky smooth when I scroll the timeline. Even on the fast edits, it works great. Fusion titles also play back smoothly. But what about the M1 and the ZenBook? The M1 handles this footage pretty well too. I would say good enough. But in comparison with the M1 Pro, I've noticed that M1 is not so smooth. You can see some drop frames here and there, but the overall experience is still very good. Even when I add Fusion titles on top, it handles it nicely. And the ZenBook was very laggy, which was a surprise for me because the specs of this machine are also really great, and we're using the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. But it is what it is. Here I have a long video clip from Dubai, and we're gonna make a time lapse out of it. Let's speed it up to 16,000%, now let's apply the stabilizer effect to this clip and see how fast these machines will process it. The M1 Pro was the fastest, 37 seconds, followed by M1 with 44 seconds, and the ZenBook finished in 1 minute and 8 seconds. Now let's render out the entire 4K video, and here we have these results. M1 Pro finished in just 1 minute and 3 seconds, M1 1 minute 31, and ZenBook 2 minutes and 26. Which is exactly the length of the actual video, by the way. And yeah, the ZenBook sounds like a jet engine. I think you can already tell how fast the M1 Pro is while working with this kind of footage. It's already more than enough for most videos I edit. Yeah, sometimes we need to add something more heavy to the timeline like graphics or maybe we have a 6K or 8K project. That's why I've done more tests for you. But before we get to them, here's a little test for all of you who are planning to edit videos in Premiere on this new machine. I really don't know why, but Premiere Pro is not fully optimized yet for the M1 MacBooks. You're looking at the same video, the same edit I used in Resolve, 4K footage, 4K timeline, and I really cannot play back the video smoothly at some points. It's really just not okay, and I believe it should be fixed in the future. But for now, I would not edit serious projects in this program. Something like a simple YouTube episode, a vlog, yeah, it's fine, but any other project that involves heavy color grading, heavy graphics, I would prefer going with Resolve, or Final Cut. Here I have the 4K H.265 footage from my Sony FX3. On the M1 Pro, when I play back a basic cut, no problems. When I have six different angles playing back at the same time, also no problems. When I have 10 angles or 16 angles, well, it starts to slow down a little bit. But let's be honest, who needs to play back 16 angles at the same time in real life? The M1 can handle this footage pretty well too, but when we have six angles playing back at the same time, it start getting some problems. It needs more time to process this footage at the start. And the ZenBook just cannot handle this footage. It's laggy and just not possible to work with. What about 8K footage? Here's the 8K ProRes footage I've downloaded from ArtGrid, and when we play back just the footage with no effects or color grading, we have almost no lags. But as soon as we start adding some color grading or effects, it instantly becomes unusable and really hard to work with. Talking about heavy effects and graphics, let's jump into After Effects. Surprisingly, the performance is quite good on the M1 Pro. I would say not as bad as it could be. This is a motion design template I've downloaded from ArtGrid and it feels fine when I'm working with this project, but it also feels like M1 MacBooks is not the main priority for Adobe. I get much better experience using Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve after
After Effects and Premiere Pro are not quite there yet. Okay, let's get to the actual numbers and render out the project in After Effects. ZenBook was the fastest, 1 minute and 50 seconds, M1 Pro 2 minutes and 4 seconds, and M1 4 minutes and 27 seconds. So let's wait for the update. Let's wait for the update. Now the most exciting test of this video, in my opinion, Unreal Engine, because what you can do with this program is mind-blowing in games as well as photography and filmmaking. So I've downloaded this free scene with buildings, let's fly around this scene and check the FPS. On the M1 Pro I was getting about 60 frames per second almost all the time, sometimes dropping to 40 frames, but it's going back to 60 pretty fast. The M1 is almost twice as slower, I was getting about 40 frames per second on average, sometimes dropping to 20. And the ZenBook did great with this test, almost 60 frames all the time, probably because of the great RTX graphics card. But let's get to the actual numbers and build the lighting of this scene. So I'm gonna click build and the M1 was the slowest, 6 minutes and 17 seconds, followed by ZenBook, 3 minutes and 15 seconds and a clear winner is the M1 Pro with 2 minutes and 46 seconds. Wow, I'm impressed. Now, with all the information, let's move back to the Apple's website. Once again, I think that for most of you guys, this model is more than enough today. Getting 32-core GPU will almost 2x the performance in comparison with the 16-core GPU. But guys, you saw the numbers, and I think that for 99% of you, this is fast enough, and I don't wanna spend extra 800 bucks just to win a few extra render speed minutes. And if you consider buying one of these models, I would go with 16 gigs of unified memory, because if you don't need the extra power of M1 Max, 90% of the time you won't use the full potential of 32 gigs. So I don't see any reason to pay 400 bucks more in this case. But if you're working with big, heavy projects, a lot of graphics involved, then I would recommend you skip this option and get 32 core GPU. Not that big of a difference in price, but a noticeable difference in performance. And you will automatically get 32 gigs of unified memory. 64 gigs, I don't know who needs this, I won't recommend this to anyone actually. So if you're taking my recommendation, I would point out three specific models. Number one, 8-core CPU and 14-core GPU, so the base 14-inch model with 16 gigs of memory. Let's call it a great entry-level option. Number two, 10-core CPU and 16-core GPU, both 14-inch and 16-inch with 16 gigs of memory. I'm gonna call it the golden mean. And number three, 10 core CPU and 32 core GPU, both 14 inch and 16 inch with 32 gigs of memory. For those of you who needs the extra power. Now consider subscribing if this video was helpful to you, smash the like button and I will see you guys in this videos.